Welcome Wyclef, and thank you for joining us during our sommelier session. Today I'm going to teach you how to properly taste champagne. This is our bottle here that we're using. It is Pierre Jouet. The difference between cava, prosecco, and champagne is cava is made in Spain, prosecco is made in Italy, and champagne is in Champagne, which is a northeast region of France. Notice that it says the actual champagne right here. That is the distingu distinguishing factor between whether you have the champagne or a sparkling wine, which is what's made in America. So I'm gonna open this up, show you the proper way to open it up. Just be careful with the cage, sometimes it pops off. You're gonna look for the little tab there. Just pull this tab around all the way. Discard the foil right here. Let me put it in my pocket so I don't get it lost. A little more foil I'll get off here. Take your time doing this. There's no rush. Safety is your biggest priority here. This has a little tab here. We're gonna turn that tab. We're gonna put our thumb on the top so it doesn't go flying off to your friend. Not too many friends though, of course. And then we can actually use the cage and the cork and we'll twist it together and you're gonna have a nice little sound that's a pop, but not too much of a pop. And here we go. All right, now, we see the bubbles starting to rise at the top, and we're gonna pour it in our champagne glass. Now, champagne glasses are utilized because of the amount of space at the top from this side to that side. If you were to use a regular wine glass, it would actually not keep the bubbles in there for very long. So the idea of using a champagne flute is that it's a small surface on the top, which doesn't allow a lot of the bubbles to actually dissipate. So here we have the champagne. Now we're gonna talk about how to taste the actual champagne. So as you see here, you have all your bubbles that are rising to the top. The smaller bubbles, the larger bubbles, that really has nothing to do with the flavor profile. It really has to do with preference. So preference of your champagne, of how you like it, whether you like it really effervescence or really like really acidity, that is your preference and that goes along with the maker itself, nothing more than just the maker itself. So we're gonna try it. So when we try this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a lick the liquid of the champagne in my mouth and then I'm gonna chew. And what that's gonna do is going to release my saliva glands and they're gonna activate with the bubbles and the acidity creating that profile. So here we go. So what's happening right now is it's a lot of acidity that's interacting with the outskirts of my mouth. Because of the saliva that's in my mouth, it actually allows me to taste really a lot of what the champagne profiles are. So this has a lot of acidity to it, lemon peels, orange zest on it. You also get a little of the honeysuckle and that sweet effervescence that you actually have on it. Then it's finished with the notes of a butter and a vanilla which is a really crisp, nice tone when you're actually thinking about champagne. You think about toast yeast points and that bread that most people associate with champagne. So it's a really nice, light, balanced, acidic wine. This will be really nicely paired with a white fish or a sliced carpaccio. Bronzino would probably be really nice with this, which is also known as Mediterranean sea bass. So when you smell your champagne, you can actually get an effervescence in the nose and how I like to smell my champagne is to open up my mouth and the nose and smell to get those yeasty toast points. So that's our lesson today. Stay tuned for next time during our sommelier sessions. Thank you very much and stay safe. We miss you.